Do you guys have a power station with a 60 volt charge controller and you're still trying to find the perfect solar panels to get the maximum amount of power? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you guys these solar panels right here, which are perfect for 60 volt charge controllers. Now these are the Calson Topcon Bifacial 200 watt solar panels. And out of all the testing I've done this year, I have not found a 200 watt panel that beats their output. Now what makes these solar panels unique is their output voltage. For example, one single panel has a voltage open circuit of 27 volts and a voltage of peak power around 24 volts. So when you combine two solar panels together in series, you get a voltage of about 50 volts or slightly under, which is perfect for a 60 volt power station. So in today's video, I'm going to be testing some of the most popular power stations on the market that have 60 volt charge controllers to see if we can get peak power using the Calson solar panels. Now, in order to test with the power stations, the wiring for the solar panels is gonna be very simple. I'm basically taking the panels in sets of two and wiring them together in series. So these two are wired in series, these two are wired in series, and then these two are wired in series. And then that means we have three sets of panels that will be producing power. So I'm gonna take the output from this set, this set, and this set, connect them together in parallel, that will give us a 2S 3P 1200 watt array to test on these power stations. Now, as for the solar conditions, these solar panels are facing directly south. It's a fall day, it's around 50 degrees. There's a little bit of spotty clouds, not too bad, so we'll see how much power we're getting. Now, I've connected my voltmeter up to the solar array so we can check the voltage open circuit. This is the peak voltage you get when your solar panels are not producing any power. You can see it's 54.9 volts, which is right around the spec. Just be aware, in extreme cold temperatures, you will see a higher voltage open circuit. So these solar panels do have a slightly higher voltage, so using them in extreme cold conditions might give you over 60 volts. You might wanna check before connecting to your power station. Now the first power station that we'll be testing with is the Jackery Home Power 3600 Plus. This has a 1000 watt charge controller. It's good for 60 volts and 24 amps. So to connect that up, I've connected all three of these solar arrays together in parallel. And then I have this splitter that goes to two 8020 adapters. So we'll connect that into the charge controller ports. Now, because we have a solar array with a lot of power, what I like to do is I like to connect the solar connectors into the power station itself. And then I like to have a secondary method of connecting the solar array up. So we aren't going to arc or damage the solar ports on the actual power station. So now we can connect up this Anderson SB50 connection and the power station will start to charge. Now it's super bright outside, so it's hard to see, but right there on the left side of the screen, we are getting 1000 watts input or 999 watts input. So we are maxing out the charge controller on the Jackery Home Power 3600 Plus. This is extremely hard to do with normal solar panels. For example, when you use 12 volt solar panels, they usually have a voltage open circuit above 20 volts. So when you connect them in a 2S configuration, the voltage is pretty low. And then when you connect them in a 3S configuration, it goes over 60 volts. Now, if you wanna use a larger format solar panel, like a 400 watt solar panel that you see behind me, well, those typically put out around 33 to 36 volts, depending on the model. And so you can use a single solar panel or multiple solar panels in parallel, but when you go to connect two of them together in series to get you that higher voltage, it goes over 60 volts. So you kind of need a solar panel in between a 12 volt panel and a 400 watt residential panel. And that's where these Calson 200 watt panels come in. They have a slightly higher voltage, which makes them perfect for a 60 volt charge controller. Now the next power station that we'll be testing is the Blue Eddy Elite 100 V2. Now this also has a 1000 watt charge controller. However, it's limited to 20 amps. So just a little bit less amperage. So 60 volts, 20 amps, 1000 watts. Now I've just connected the solar array into the Blue Eddy Elite 100 V2. And you can see on the screen there, 1000 watts input. So you can max out the charge controller on the Elite 100 V2 with these solar panels as well. Now what we're doing here is called over paneling. We have a solar array with 1200 watts, even though these power stations are limited to 1000 watts input. As long as you don't go over the peak voltage, the power station will limit the amperage to its allotted amount. For example, the Blue Eddy is 20 amps, the Jackery is 24 amps. And so even if you have more amperage available in your solar array, the power station will only allow 20 or 24 amps in respectively. So it doesn't damage the power station. Over paneling it allows you to get more power output throughout the day. Now the next power station that we'll be testing is the EcoFlow Delta 3 Plus. 
This also has 1000 watts of solar input, but it's a little bit more unique. Now I flipped the power station around to show you guys the back where you have two independent 500 watt charge controllers. Now these allow you to charge from two different sources at the same time, but the power station also allows you to connect up to the same source. Now each of these are rated for 60 volts and 15 amps, so you can get a combined 60 volts, 30 amps from both these ports up to 1000 watts combined. So I've just connected the solar array into both of those charging ports at the same time. And on the screen here, we see a little bit over 1000 watts input. So yes, you can get the maximum power input connecting up to the Delta 3 Plus as well. Now the final power station that we'll be testing with is the new Anker C2000 Gen 2. Now if we swing the power station around, you can see the solar charging port here. It's rated for 60 volts up to 17 amps or 800 watts. Now the problem here is that 17 amps is pretty low. It's actually the lowest amperage input out of all the power stations we tested today. So we'll see if we can get the full 800 watts charging input with that 17 amps. Now the display on the C2000 is kind of hard to see in the middle of the day, but I've connected it up and right there below that state of charge, you can see 799 watts input. So we are able to get the maximum input with these solar panels on this C2000 Gen 2. Now, just to swap things up a little bit, remember we have 1200 watts of solar panels here, but what if I just take out a pair of two of the panels so we only have 800 watts? Let's see if we can get 800 watts input with just using four of these solar panels. So just disconnected two of those solar panels, so now we only have 800 watts of solar panels connected up, and we are getting 800 watts input on the power station. That's why I absolutely love these solar panels. They put out the full rated power. 800 watts of solar panels and 800 watts going into the power station. So I have one final test that I want to do with just 800 watts of solar. So I have these four panels still wired up and I'm going to connect them into the EcoFlow Delta 3 Plus just to see how much power we're getting from these 800 watt panels. Now I will say, I don't know if you guys can see this, but I do have some clouds up there. So the conditions aren't even perfect. Are we gonna get more than 800 watts from these four panels? Now I've just connected those 800 watt panels into both of the charging ports. And you can see we are getting 810 to 811 watts input. Now, like I said, there is that cloud in front of the sun right now. And we are still getting over the rated output of these solar panels. So awesome. Now, just a little note here, these solar panels aren't even angled properly. I just set them up. I didn't even take time to angle them exactly at the sun. It's past midday, so the sun is moving on. They're not angled exactly towards the sun. And we have that hazy cloud and we are still getting the full rated output. So after all the testing in the video today, you can see that these solar panels perform really well. So if you happen to have a 60 volt charge controller or power station with 60 volt limit, these are gonna be the perfect solar panel, at least as long as you're not in crazy extreme low temperatures. As you get down near 20 degrees, 10 degrees, zero degrees, you might have a slight risk of these going over 60 volts open circuit. As the solar panels warm up from the sun, the voltage should go a little lower and then you can connect them up. So just keep an eye out for the voltage if you live in an area that gets extremely cold. But during the spring, the summer and the fall, these should be perfect for a 60 volt power station. Now, even though these solar panels put out excellent power, they're actually one of the most affordable 200 watt panels currently available. If you look on Amazon, they're priced around $150. They are on a current sale right now. And if you are interested in picking them up, I'll include a link to them down in the video description. You can buy them in single 200 watt panels or in pairs of two panels for 400 watts. Now guys, if you're new to the channel, my goal is to test and review products to try to find the best performance for the price. And I feel that these solar panels do a really good job at that. Now, if you guys use a solar panel that's similar, either in price or performance, I'm interested to see what you guys are using. So make sure you leave a comment down below. If you guys like the video, please smash the thumbs up button. And until next time, we'll see you guys later.